So this lesson is evaluating exponential expressions, which really means we're going to take expressions that have exponents in them and we're going to simplify them. And that really was what evaluating generally ends in meaning. Sometimes it means you put a value in for one variable and figure out what the numerical value of the whole thing is, but generally it just means you simplify. So that's uh, what Nolan needs to do here. Nolan sent in a question for me. He said, uh, I have to simplify the expression, and the simplified expression should have no negative exponents. Thanks. Please help. So, Nolan, let's take a look at what you have here. Um, your expression has one term on top that is raised to the power of negative 3, and another on the bottom, which is also raised to the power of negative 3. Now, since those are both raised to the same negative power, we could write that as a single fraction raised to that power. So let's write this as 2x cubed y squared over 3yx, and then the whole thing to the power of negative 3. Now the reason I do that is because it sort of illustrates that we can deal with the stuff inside first and then worry about the other power. So let's simplify what we can inside here. 2 divided by 3 isn't really going to simplify much, so we'll just carry that straight over. We'll have 2 on top and 3 on the bottom. And then we have x cubed on top and x on the bottom, so we can subtract 3 minus 1, and that'll give us a 2 on top, so we'll have x squared on top. And then we have y squared on top and y to the first on the bottom, so that'll cancel, and we'll be left with just y to the first on top, so just y. So now we have 2x squared y over 3, and we're taking that whole thing to the power of negative 3. Now, one other thing I want to do that I don't usually do when I'm figuring it, uh, figuring a problem like this, but I think makes it easy to understand, and that is I'm going to break up this negative 3 right here. Negative 3 is the same thing as negative 1 times 3. So I could write this thing as 2x squared y over 3 to the power of negative 1 times 3. And I'm going to do that because then we can deal with raising it to the power of negative 1 first, and then take the answer to that to the power of 3. And that's because to raise something to the power of negative 1, <clears throat> pardon me, all we need to do is invert the fraction. Because if we had all these things, every one of these was to a negative power, we could make the powers positive by inverting that fraction. So that's all we're going to do. To raise it to this power, we're just going to flip it over. So we'll get rid of that negative 1 power, and we'll take the whole fraction and write it upside down. So we'll have 3 over 2x squared y, and now we have that whole thing to the power of 3, but we've gotten rid of that negative 1 by inverting the fraction. So now we have 3 over 2x squared y to the power of 3, which is first 3 to the power of 3, that's 27, and then 2 to the power of 3, that's 8. x squared to the power of 3 is x to the sixth and y to the power of 3, that's y cubed. So your final sort of simplified expression here is 27 over 8x to the 6th y cubed. And what we can learn from this is two things. First of all, that sometimes it's easier to break up a power and deal with the raising to a power in two different steps like we did here. And second, that if you have a numerator and a denominator and they're each raised to the same power, we can write that as a single fraction raised to that power and deal with the fraction inside first.